Hungarian folk tales. The Salt Princess. Once upon a time, there lived an old king who had three beautiful daughters. The old king wanted to find husbands for his daughters before he died, but he could not decide which daughter should receive the most beautiful of his three kingdoms. So he decided to give his most beautiful kingdom to the daughter who loved him the most. The old king asked his daughters and the eldest replied, I love you, dear father, as a dove loves good grain. What about you, child? I love you, dear father, as a hot summer day loves a cool breeze. And what about you, daughter? I love you, dear father, like people love salt. What do you mean, salt? You ungrateful child. Is this what I raised and loved you for all these years? Get out of here. Get out of my sight. His daughter tried to explain that people love salt very much indeed. She sobbed and begged, but her father shunned her from his palace. The poor princess walked and walked. She was terribly sad. She walked until she reached a vast forest. There she found a large hollow tree and she hid herself inside it. She lived by gathering delicious nuts and ripe berries from the green forest. One day, the prince from the neighbouring kingdom was out hunting when he happened to pass by. He was chasing a deer when he spotted the princess. But when she saw the prince, she hid in a hollow tree. The handsome prince soon found the tree and shouted into the hollow, Who is in there? But the princess refused to reply. Who is in there? Speak up. Speak up or I'll shoot. The terrified princess eventually appeared. She was so beautiful, but she could not stop crying. The prince was so overcome that he embraced the sad princess, sat her high on his horse and took her home to his palace. Their wedding was so grand that even the dogs ate beef broth and the young couple lived as happily as two doves. Time passed until the young king asked his bride one day, Tell me, why did your father chase you away? because I told him that I loved him like people love salt. Why is that all? Then the young king had an idea and sent a letter to the old king, inviting him to come and visit. The old king came the very next day in a golden carriage. The young king led him to his grandest chamber and sat him down at the table. His servant served soup, but it had no salt in it. And the meat had no flavour either. 
The king ate a great deal, but was still left feeling hungry. He remained silent for a while, but eventually had to speak. What kind of cook do you have, son? Who makes food with no salt? I heard you don't like salt, sire. Who told you that? Why, your daughter, of course. Then the princess appeared. The king's daughter smiled at her old father, who shed tears of joy. Father and daughter embraced, and the king gave his most beautiful kingdom to his youngest daughter. And they all lived happily ever after. Once upon a time, long ago and far away, there lived a king who had a beautiful daughter. The king had a wonderful garden full of flowers and with a giant tree in the middle. One day, the princess was strolling in the garden when a wind blew so strongly that it nearly blew the giant tree to the ground. But instead, it whisked the princess up and sat her right on top of the tree. The king let it be known that he would give his daughter and half of his kingdom to the brave man who brought his daughter back. Young men, brave and tall, came one after the other, but none of them could climb the tree. One broke his arm, one his leg, and the other his neck. The king had a young swineherd called John. The swineherd was in the forest one day with his pigs, when one of them came up to him and said, John, you should rescue the princess. What foolish talk, little pig. It's not foolish at all. Just go to the king and tell him. So young John went to see the king that same evening. What's the matter, my boy? Your Majesty, I will climb the giant tree and rescue your daughter, if you will allow. I will allow you, John, but if you fall, fall to your death, or else I will have you executed for insolence. Your Royal Highness, please have a mighty buffalo killed and have seven pairs of boots and seven coats made from its thick hide, and I shall return when they are all worn through. John climbed up the tree with an axe, and he climbed as quickly as a cat. He climbed and climbed until he reached the longest branch, and then he crawled as he could no longer walk. When he reached the end of the branch, he jumped on one of the giant leaves, and it launched him up through the clouds like a sprightly frog. The world above was much the same as the one below. He was exploring this new place when he heard the princess asking him, What are you doing here, John? I'm looking for you, princess. Oh, John, you should know that my husband is a dragon with three fierce heads. When he finds out that you have come to take me home, he will kill you at once. Then she took young John into the palace. John, I shall hide you here so that he will not find you when he comes home. Then I shall present you to him properly. The dragon soon returned home and he opened the door with his mighty battle axe. 
and it flew open. I smell a stranger here. Who was in my home? Don't be angry, husband dear. My swineherd climbed up from the earth below to serve me here. Well, we shall see whether we can use you or not. Take a seat and eat with me. John ate and drank and so did the dragon. After their meal, the dragon took John to the stables, where he showed him the horses and explained his chores. A young horse lay in the corner in a miserable state. It was thin and very weak, while all the other horses were incredibly fat. The dragon said to John, your job, John, is to feed my horses and keep the stables clean. But never feed the young horse anything it wants to eat. If it wants oats, give it hay. And if it wants hay, give it water. So the boy did as the dragon told him. One day the dragon went out to hunt when John was feeding the horses. He stopped for a moment and asked the thin horse, you poor thing, why are you so thin? You can't even walk. John, you have a good heart. If you listen to me, you will have good fortune. I know why you came. Tomorrow is Sunday. Go to the princess and tell her to find out from the dragon where he holds his strength and then let me know. And that's what he did. The next day, the princess said to the dragon, darling dragon, don't go hunting today. I feel so lonely without you. And she began to caress the dragon. The dragon was happy as he thought the woman loved him, but she loved him as much as she loved horse manure. Dear husband, do not deny an answer to a question of mine. What do you want to ask, dear wife? I only want to know where you keep your strength. Oh, dear wife, no one else should know about that except me. If you don't tell me, you don't really love me. But I do love you, dear. If you loved me, you would tell me. Look, my darling, this is a great secret. No one must know about it. People always say that once a woman and a man are married, they should have no secrets any longer. Very well, I will tell you. But you must not tell another soul. There is a silver bear living in the forest. It goes to the stream every day at noon to take a drink. If someone cut its head in two, a rabbit would jump out. If someone shot the rabbit and cut its head in two, then a box would jump out of that. There are nine wasps in the box. If someone destroyed that box and killed the wasps, then I would become weaker than a fly. The wife kissed him and brought him a jug of strong red wine. Let's drink to your health. They filled their glasses and the dragon drank his glass of wine in one mighty gulp. The princess pretended to drink her wine, but did not, and poured the wine on the floor. Well, said the dragon, let's now drink a glass of wine to your health. The dragon drank the wine, and the princess did not, but she poured it down her dress. Then the princess said, now let's drink to John's good health. When they drank the next glass of wine, the princess could see that the dragon was getting drunk. Dear husband, let's drink another glass of wine to the long life we shall live together. So they did. Then the dragon fell down like a log. The princess called John in. John, now I know where he keeps his strength. After she told him the story, he went out to the stable and told the story to the horse. Go and build a fire from wood, and after the fire has died down, bring me the hot embers. And that's what John did. The horse ate the hot ashes and said to John, and now let me out of the stable. And that's what John did. The horse ate the hot embers and then it transformed into a stallion with a golden mane and five legs. John, run down into the cellar. There you will find a golden saddle and a suit made of golden thread. Put the suit on and then take the saddle and put it on my back. You will also find a sword hanging on a nail. You must take that too. John did as he was told. When they arrived, the silver bear was drinking at the stream. 
The silver bear saw them and tried to attack. The horse said, don't be afraid, John, be brave. When the dragon's strength was finally crushed, the horse said, now let's go home. There is nothing to be afraid of anymore. So back they went and found the dragon lying weak on the floor. Now both get on my back because I will take you home. The king was old and frail when they arrived back. John approached him and said, Your Majesty, I have brought your daughter home. Here I am, father dear. The princess embraced the king and they both shed tears of joy. Even brave young John was seen to cry. John, you will be the king from now on. I give you my daughter, I give you my kingdom, I give you everything I possess. John married the pretty princess and they both lived happily ever after. Crayfish, the egg, and the cockerel. Once upon a time, a very long time ago, there was a little pin that was very bored in the sewing box. And the little pin thought it would go out and see the world. The pin walked and walked, and as it was walking along, it met a dog, and the dog said, Where are you going, friend? Why, I'm going out to see the world. Then I shall go with you too. Please do. They walked and walked, and as they were walking, they met a crayfish. The crayfish said, Where are you going to, friend? Why? I'm going out to see the world. Then I shall go with you too. Please do. They walked and walked and they were walking along when they met a rotten egg. The egg said, Where are you going, friend? Why, I'm going out to see the wide world. Then I shall go with you too. do. They walked and walked and they were walking when they met a cockerel. The cockerel said, where are you going to, friend? Why, I'm going out to see the world. Then I shall go too. Please do. They walked and walked until they arrived in the back of beyond and night began to fall around them and the sky grew dark. The four of them looked for a place to lay their heads for the night, but they found themselves in a vast forest and searched and searched for a place to sleep. Then they caught sight of a cottage where they decided to go and ask for shelter. walked into the cottage, but found that it was empty inside. It doesn't matter that no one's at home, we can still sleep here for the night. 
and each found a place to lay its head. The pin stuck into a towel, the egg rolled into the ashes, the crayfish sat in the wash basin, the cockerel roosted on top of the fence, and the dog lay down on the shady porch. Then they all fell fast asleep because they were tired from all the walking they had done that day. The cottage was owned by three foxes that had gone down into the town to steal chickens from farms as the darkness descended. Now the three foxes came running home. As they ran, twigs cracked under their feet and the cockerel heard them approaching and crowed a warning to its friends. The foxes stopped for a second when they heard the crowing, but then they ran quickly on. Then the dog took notice and began to bark. The foxes stopped again when they heard the dogs barking. What could be happening at the cottage, they thought. But then they carried quickly on. When the foxes arrived, the cockerel crowed, the dogs snapped at their heels, but they carried quickly on into the cottage. But a terrible surprise still awaited them. The father fox said to its son, quickly go and look for a coal in the ashes, that we can light a lamp and see what's happening in the cottage. One of the fox's sons went to the fireplace and sorted through the ashes. But the egg blew up in the fox's face, so it ran to the basin for water where the crayfish lay that pinched the fox hard. It tried and tried to shake the crayfish from its paw. It grabbed the towel to dry itself and the pin pricked it sharply. Run away, we need to run from this terrible place. And the foxes ran and ran and ran away and may still be running till this very day.